Hey guys, so lately I've been looking to get back into flying RC airplanes. I used to do it when I was younger, but you know, interest shifted, life got busy. But you know, since I'm building a quadcopter flight controller from scratch right now, my interest in RC airplanes has kind of been rekindled and both me and the airplane behind me are itching to get back into the sky. Uh, I haven't touched this red Super Cub behind me for the past like six years or so. And I thought I'd bring you guys along with and show you what we're gonna have to do to get it up and running again and also bring you along with me on its very first flight in a long time. So the plane I'll get up and running now is the Hobby King Decathlon and unfortunately Hobby King discontinued this product a while ago and uh, they don't make it anymore. It's made primarily out of foam and has a rectangular wing with a 38 inch wingspan and a 7 inch cord. Its length is 31 inches tip to tail and I will be powering it with a 3 cell 1500 milliamp hour LiPo battery. Alright but before we get this guy in the air though we still need to fix a few problems that it has. Don't worry it's gonna be okay. So first on the list is a servo plug I broke last time I used this plane. <laughs> um, the wires can come out of their socket pretty easily, but luckily I had a few extra servo plugs laying around and all I did was cut off the old one, strip the wires back, and soldered on a new connector. You know, no biggie. Next I needed to swap out the battery connector from a blue EC2 connector to a yellow XT60 connector because here at Microengineering, we use the XT60 battery connector standard. You know, I decided that while making this project. <laughs> um, this is also relatively easy to do, and I definitely inhaled my monthly dose of vaporized lead and uh, other hazardous stuff while doing the soldering. Next on the list was figuring out how to accommodate my new larger batteries, because in the past I used smaller 1300 milliamp hour ones, and they worked fine, but my new ones, the 1500 milliamp hour ones, are a bit too big. And so what I ended up doing was making a bracket out of a paint stir stick and hot glue. I started off by making some small supports and hot gluing them to the side of the fuselage in order to attach a larger piece that spanned across the interior. And that larger piece supports the battery and prevents it from falling into the fuselage. And after a few trips out to the garage to saw some wood and some harsh reminders that hot glue is in fact hot, <laughs> um, this was my final result. Then the final important problem to address was the airplane CG or center of gravity. And to do this, I just simply got some heavy washers, about 100, 150 grams worth, and hot glued them to the inside of the engine cowling as far forward as possible. And as you can see, the CG is much better now. And so yeah, after double checking everything else on the plane, like servo connections, control surface hinges, making sure screws are tightened, and then doing an engine static test, I was finally ready to take it out to the field for its first test flight. All right, so we're at the park now, uh, ready to do the first test flight. I got the plane sitting over there all ready to go. It's, uh, the winds are relatively calm right now. They're blowing, coming from behind my back, going this way. They're pretty light. Uh, as you can see, it's still winter here in Minnesota. Uh, still some snow on the ground. It's 40 degrees out. So basically that's like summer for us Minnesotans. And uh, got two fully charged batteries. Hopefully I'll be able to burn through both of them today. Yeah, I'm kind of anxious, so let's just get up in the air, all right? Whew. All right, let's give her some chooch and let's go. Ah, shit. I didn't expect the plane to veer so much to the left, and luckily I was able to save it. It only got about a foot or so off the ground, so, you know, I just taxied back and tried again. I did manage to get off the ground, but the plane really wanted to bank heavily to the left, just like it did on the ground. And after some finagling with the trim, I was finally able to get it to fly straight and level. And actually didn't fly too bad. This airplane also flew a lot faster than I remember, so I really needed to keep flying in a tight square so that it wouldn't get too far away from me.
here's when things start to get a bit sketchy. Um, I was trying some short approaches to practice approaching for landing, but I was having a hard time slowing it down and maintaining a smooth approach. And this wasn't due to the airplane, <laughs> it's just that I'm not a good pilot and I was getting a bit out of my comfort zone. And because the battery voltage was getting a bit low, I had to keep on adding power to keep it speed up. And eventually, the plane got a bit too slow and didn't have enough chooch to pull out of a stall, and um... Yeah, I crashed. Alright, so damage report time, boys. Uh, if you look at the prop right there, propeller broke clean off the shaft. <laughs> um... That, that black piece is the remainder of the propeller. The other blades popped off. I'll show you in a sec. Otherwise, damage on the, f on the engine mount, on the firewall, not too bad. It'll, that's, that's fine. Everything else on the airplane, the control surfaces, the landing gear are okay. But here's the carnage. <laughs> oh boy. So counterweight in the nose broke off and those are the pieces of hot glue that held it on right there <laughs> here are the propeller blades there should be that should be one propeller not two pieces the nose cone is removable anyways so that's fine then a piece of plastic here that's from the engine cowling and uh, as you can see the engine cowling there's a much bigger hole in it now. <laughs> also, the little tail dragger tail wheel broke off, so taxing on the ground is going to be a bit more difficult now. This little guy went on the tail right there. Now it's not there. The metal broke. It didn't just pop out of the socket. It's broke, broke. Overall, I think it's still salvageable doesn't really need the cowling except it's really nice that it, if it does probably can figure out how to attach some uh, weights up in front for the CG otherwise I might be able to do something on the internals as well yeah, I think it's fine though it'll live to fly another day it just sort of will require some more jank engineering all right so post-flight debriefing um, we crashed <laughs> When I first, so when I first took off, I had to abort the first takeoff because the plane veered pretty dramatically to the to the left, and I couldn't quite reorient it to, back to the right. So luckily, I was able to abort the takeoff. The plane only got a foot off the ground. I was able to land it perfectly fine. But then I taxied back, gave it the gas, took off, immediately wanted to bank to the left. So I knew something wasn't quite right. I was trying to finagle with the controls and keep it in the air. Um, trying to figure out if it was either rudder or aileron that was causing the plane to bank to the left so much. And after I got the aileron trim in and figured out, the plane flew great. Elevator trim was good, rudder trim was good. Um, yeah, just the aileron was very much off. But after I got it um, trimmed out and everything, the plane flew pretty well. The aileron is definitely very sensitive in the, um, with the ailerons. Elevator, it was fine. But I just did a few circuits around the uh, around the park, and then unfortunately, as the battery was starting to get lower, the power I was having to increase the power more and more to keep it in the air. I think I drained the battery a bit too much, and so while I was trying to do one of my passes, like a little short approach to practice for landing, I unfortunately uh, got a little bit too slow, and the plane ended up stalling, and I couldn't recover from it. And it banked to the left and nose dived into the ground. <laughs> Luckily into a snowbank, not into the concrete. Yeah, so the snow kind of helped pad it a little bit. I was probably only about 10 feet off the ground as well, so didn't fall from like 100 feet from the air. Yeah, <laughs> there is some damage, but luckily it's all um, engine firewall forward damage. Nothing else um, got damaged. The wings are fine. Control surfaces are fine. It's just the engine cowling got pretty beat up. The, um, I have a spare propeller, so I'll be able to put a new one of those on because that shattered into a few pieces. Uh, we'll figure out uh, some fix to get the CG back to normal because I did put my CG weights up in the cowling and I probably can't use this cowling anymore. 
So uh, this plane will, this is definitely fixable. This plane will live to fly another day. So yeah, we crashed, but luckily it wasn't that bad of a crash and uh, it's definitely fixable. But maybe I'll just stick to programming and electronic stuff for a little while until I get this thing repaired. Uh, but let me know down in the comments if you like that kind of content because I had a lot of fun making this video and uh, hopefully you enjoyed watching it. Um, until the next video, <laughs> see you later.